Hi there, welcome back to the Kenny Veach M Cave Mystery. Today, a very important discussion which will be of your interest. So make sure to stick around from start to finish as we have some important questions that need to be answered. When putting it into perspective, trying to seek the truth in the disappearance of Kenny Veach, the mysterious M Cave, what happened? Where is it? Where is he? People have tried doing research, others have physically hiked, different people have been attacked for doing what they do, right? Mainly online, but some have had forms of resistance, intimidation in real life, right? What I want to try and understand today is who exactly is being attacked? And for those that are attacked, does it link to another person being attacked? You know, if... You receive resistance through getting close to the truth. You reveal, uncover something you're not supposed to find. Well, it might get suppressed. There may be a wave of backlash from someone or some people out there. And they may hurt you. They may scare you. Try and push, deter you away. Similar, possibly, to how some hikers felt. If they felt vibrations out in the desert. It was a bit uncomfortable. It was a bit strange. Kind of pushed people onwards, moved them on as if they didn't, someone or something didn't want people to be hanging around in that spot. There's different outlooks, okay? But I'm going to get through it today bit by bit and look at a couple of different hikers and researchers in this case as to their beliefs, their ideas, some of their findings and how were they treated when they did come to a certain conclusion, when they did find a supposed truth, right? You know, there'll be other people that haven't been attacked at all. That's why I want to try and put everything into perspective today to see is there a correlation with being close to the truth and being threatened by a dark force presence out there? And how many people does it really impact? Okay, so I said, make sure to stick around. For those that are currently here in this live premiere, welcome, appreciate that. Feel free to share your thoughts, opinions, reactions in the live chat box on the right hand side of the screen. If you've got any additional comments or thoughts, leave your comments down below under this video. And for those watching on catch-ups, let me know your thoughts down below. It'll help increase the engagement and spread awareness of this case in general. Down below in the pinned comment by me, You'll find some additional links if you wish to check them out. And if you want to support the channel in alternative ways, there's always that option there. As a random heads up, when it comes to YouTube Super Chats, YouTube Super Stickers, YouTube take a 30% cut, okay? When it comes to PayPal, as you see the link down below, PayPal only take a 1.5 to 3.5% cut. You see the significant difference, right? So the, the receiver who may be receiving a form of support will be almost getting the full amount compared to what they would on YouTube. That's just a heads up in case anyone was interested in the statistics there. Now, for people that may be more interested in previous video coverage and stuff we've been talking about, Kenny Veach or not, you look top right corner of the screen where the I symbol is, click on that and you'll find some additional videos for you to catch up on if you have missed out, okay? I'm also trying to engage in the community tab section on my channel page at times, where it'd be updates, polls, so make sure to participate in them as well because it could help direct and steer where we look at next with different videos, okay? So originally I was gonna do an Idaho for case map analysis, but things got in the way. So I'm just doing this more simplistic one, but arguably it's probably even more important, right? So there is a level of great focus needed. Apologies if I do cough. Unfortunately, the cough has kind of come back, creeped back on in, never left. Um, as it seems to be 100 day cough, so it's gonna last for 100 days. I don't know how many days are left, but it's shit. Nothing I can do about it. Tried stuff, fuck it. Okay, screw it. It can go to hell if it wants. So, referring back to Kenny Veach, where do we need to start exactly? I mean, you could ask the question, first of all, who is the most attacked person within the case? Who receives all the flank? 
Who receives all the criticism, the threats, the resistance, the complaints, the insults, whatever it may be, any form of resistance, who receives it the most? You can let me know your thoughts down below or in the chat right now as to which creator or hiker, researcher on the case that has been attacked the most. Now, it might seem a bit biased, but in my opinion, I would say I am the most attacked individual within the case, simply because I put myself out there more than other people do, and I'm kind of doing it on a regular basis. And I do upload the most videos compared to anybody else. That's just a valid observation. So obviously, the more you put yourself out there, the more videos and content you create, the higher the chances of receiving criticism, receiving a form of resistance. And if I do focus in on a specific topic, which is sensitive, which other people may have covered and been attacked for it, if I focus and lock onto that, then obviously there's going to be creating some kind of danger, some kind of warning as if, oh, look at Warlight Ref, still ongoing with the case, covering it, not giving Kenny a moment's peace whilst he's hiding away somewhere or whatever's happening in the background. You get one of those like little um, nagging pains and it never seems to go away. Well, I could be described as that, okay? A pain in the arse for other people out there that are trying to cover up the case involved in some way. So you'd think one needs to be eliminated so they stop covering it. So that's one of the reasons as to why I could be attacked quite often. But to balance it out, okay, besides the truth, okay, getting attacked for revealing the truth, maybe I might be attacked more than anybody else, but it might be more in a trolling way. So people coming along, messing about, showing a form of resistance, but it's just people messing. Nothing serious, nothing like a threat, nothing dangerous to that extent. Whereas some other people out there have been harmed more, maybe psychologically, maybe physically in some way. Might have not happened as much, but the impact of it is greater than what I've experienced. As I said, it varies in different ways. I would arguably say the individuals that have been attacked or felt attacked and it happened in real life seems more serious and more personal, right? That's what I would say. Um, obviously, if a person is paranoid, they could think that they're getting attacked. They could think that they're being stalked or infiltrated. That's another possibility. I mean, in similar fashion with the Dylan Rounds case community, you, you, you had the odd paranoid individual who thought everybody was after them, but the case there was crisis actors involved, it was all made up, it's all one big game, some kind of matrix going on. It's like, you need to calm down a little bit because once your mind starts to get going, you become a bit paranoid, you start making many different links to many different things which aren't entirely true, but you make it that way because you want to believe that and you can't help yourself. It can get out of hand pretty quickly and it can get to the point where you actually convince yourself that you are a target and you are being hunted down when really no one gives a damn about you. That's always a, a slight possibility and it's obviously important to raise within the Kenny Veach case because with changes in behaviour of people with time, whether they be an emotional or not, some people could be vulnerable in different ways which then can impact or alter their behaviour or how they feel, what they sense around them in their environment, online, digitally speaking or in real life. So we don't need to get into prime examples as to who falls under that category, but it's possible that it can happen, right? So let's just let's just mention a few key individuals in the Kenny Beach case who may have been attacked in some way or another, okay? So this is just at least from my memory. If you want to add on with your own thoughts, feel free to do so. And I'm not specifically highlighting people that may have got attacked when actually out there hiking, maybe more so afterwards, possibly. I mean, if it's like an animal attack or hearing voices paranormal, 
it, it's, it's not a, a direct form of resistance. I think, to be fair, I'll, I'll include the odd weird experience or encounter out there where it felt like someone was being pushed away from a specific area. So I will include Jeff Clark in this list, right? Just want to make the param parameters um, accurate and clear to understand. So I'm about to list people that have been attacked within the Kenny Veach case for getting close to the truth, either about Kenny Veach or the mysterious M cave, okay? And then we can go into a bit more detail as to how they were attacked later. So Atari has been attacked both online, more so, but has also had some encounters in real life where it's felt like there's a presence of someone or some people connected with Kenny or further afar, which have gone after Atari for her research, her coverage online, specifically about Kenny Veach. So Atari has been attacked in different ways in real life and online, supposedly. Jeff Clark has been attacked, not physically, not exactly psychological warfare, but the presence of feeling vibrations, feeling a zap, losing lost time on the same day of a hike in 2016. The reason why that's a form of resistance, maybe people not directly there at the time when observing Jeff Clark hiking, but equipment already set up to prevent people from sticking around possibly, or getting too close to a an entrance somewhere which could lead to a cave or uh, a tunnel military related, okay? You're hiking out there, you can have been pushed along or pushed away because of a uncomfortable feeling, it's not natural, kind of man-made, electronics, gadgets, equipment used to prevent people from sticking about because if you get too close to it and somehow you manage to avoid the vibrations or get through it, What's on the other side? Could be top secret, could be very mysterious. So Jeff Clark specifically in real life has felt a push of resistance, not directly at the hands by a human, but by possible equipment out there. Online, yeah, Jeff has been insulted and criticized by Silver Heels and all that, but that's more lighthearted. We don't include that on this list. Who else? Sean Horlacher kind of online, suppressed, silenced, feeling attacked, his channel being attacked during live streams and stuff, but also, I guess, in real life, whether it be falling sick at the cave, possibly, some kind of personal attack onto him, and even making it home and through the years or months receiving unexpected, unwelcomed visitors knocking on the door, or at least close to home, once again, feeling like a personal attack. Kind of like Atari, okay? So you see some similarities there, partially. Now, is there anybody else? Apologies if I have missed out on anybody's names. Let me at least highlight or list the people that haven't been attacked in really any way. They may have felt strange things out there when hiking, but not as a form of resistance. J Chuck. J Chuck has been very vocal online on YouTube about Kenny, about the cave, has been hiking out there many times and still does. Few strange experiences, but he's never been attacked and he's not really been caught up in drama, conflict as for being attacked or feeling resistance being on the receiving end of it. It's just not happened for J Chuck but it has for me, as for the online part. So that's interesting, right? Because J Chuck has been active, but he's just not been attacked. SB Vegas Adventures. Correct me if I'm wrong, but at least from what I know of, SB hasn't been attacked in a bad way, whether it be online or in real life. SB had had some sketchy, maybe tense encounters out there in the desert, but not like the form of resistance as if you were getting close to revealing the truth and then you were pushed along or scared off. I don't think that happened to SB. 
Jay Silver Heels, nothing ever really happened to him. Mystery Hikes, nothing ever really happened to him. Outpost Mojave, nothing really happened to them, that group of guys. I think Mystery Hikes and Outpost Mojave didn't really experience any resistance or attacks directed towards them because it was more of a, a one, two time, one to two time, one off experience and involvement within the case. People moving on ever since. You know, you come in brief, do a bit of coverage, talk a little, leave. You're not going to be a target. You're not seen as a threat. But the more you stick around, the longer you're around for, the chances are at some point, maybe you will be on the receiving end of something nasty, right? Online, real life. Scott Natal, looking back now, Scott Natal uploaded a range of videos online, said there was a big presence there. His videos did get recognised quite well, 40, 50, 60,000 views, maybe 100,000 plus views. So he would have been somewhat well known, right? Okay, he moved on to a different case, but that might have been due to moving on to where he was working at next for his job. So Utah or something, like with the Dylan Rounds coverage. But for the time Scott Natal spent within the Kenny Beach case and searching about and being very hands-on and long, rich videos, Scott Natal didn't get attacked in that way, did he? Not online, not really, and not in real life. Is there anybody else I can think of? Um, don't think so. When it came to Mosaic Michelle, a viewer on this channel, debunking some cryptic messages, which I was on the receiving end of when they were sent to me. Mosaic Michelle did solve them online and um, I think credit was given, but then she disappeared for good. Don't know why. Has that got anything to do with being attacked or one's past being followed from other people back then? I don't know. That's unknown of, so I'm not really going to include her on the list. But I think that's mainly it. Obviously, there'll be other people that have gotten involved in the case or hiked out there, Aqua Chigger, etc. But it might have been a one-off or there's only been two times and they've just not been attacked. So really, it's only two main individuals that have been attacked, both online and in real life, and that's Atari and Sean Horlacher, right? Now, I know you could say Susan Veach has been attacked or has been insulted, but... Is that because Susan is supposedly revealing the truth? I think the supposed attacks, if you feel attacked, isn't done in like a, a nasty way to silence Susan. It's just more of a, um, a response back to say, this isn't good enough. That doesn't prove enough. That evidence isn't concrete. I think that's what people have been pushing back towards Susan. From at least what I'm aware of, Susan hasn't been kidnapped or harmed in that sense or impacted in real life, at least from what I'm aware of when it comes to the Kenny Beach case. Of course, Susan has been quite vocal at times and has presented some information and text messages, screenshots or emails. And, you know, with credit being given and Susan allowing that, that kind of puts her name out there. So you'd think that maybe it would be a form of resistance, but possibilities not guaranteed there could be a level of biasness in which if anyone was going to attack Susan they may be less likely to do so if they're a family member because they are kind of like a family connected so they might be kind of like an emotional uh, connection which what do you call it creates a bit of leniency whereas if it's just a, a complete outright stranger not even tied to the family well it's not going to be driven emotionally and if you're saying a lot, doing a lot, kind of like Susan is, trying to reveal the truth, then family members are more likely to suppress or silence an outsider rather than an insider. So, as I said, there's different factors in play which can result in different outcomes and forms of treatments, depending uh, who you're on the receiving end of at the time and what you've exactly done. Okay? So, we've whittled it down, okay? Specifically, Jeff Clark and his experiences, weird, strange, somewhat unexplainable. If you want to tie in SB Vegas as, as well, 
weird, strange, unexplainable. Similarities crossing on over, more so with equipment failure, maybe malfunctioning at certain times and moments on a hike or in a certain location or type of location, maybe a mine shaft. Yes, strange, weird. Mm. Does that link to resistance? No, but it links to the mystery, a mystery. Whether it's directly tied with what Kenny experienced or found, or it's some, something completely different, there is a mystery out there and it has impacted some hikers when exploring about. But in terms of the other people, Sean Horlacher, I mean, you could say the sickness, a strange experience out there. Um, not that Jeff Clark or SB has had that encounter, feeling sick after being close to a supposed cave, but that could be a mystery within itself. But Atari, what she's experienced online and in real life, is probably more unique compared to all the other people within the case of how they may have been attacked. Okay, And when it comes to Atari, she doesn't hike, but she does research and she has done in the past. And she's been very vocal and focused, concentrated on Kenny Veach alone. Besides the M cave, whether it exists or not, whether it was made up by Kenny or it is out there somewhere, just Kenny couldn't find it, or maybe Kenny was purposely causing misdirection so no one else could find it. I would, I would question and say, well, if he was purposely causing misdirection, then what's the whole point of him talking and bragging about it on YouTube then? And then people say, prove it, prove it, show us where it's at. So he's motivated by the peer pressure to go back out there, but purposely not find it and cause misdirection. Who does that really benefit? It only makes him look worse. It only damages and harms his credibility. So it would seem a bit silly for that reason, unless it was held against his will that he was forced to cause misdirection. Military urged him to do that. That's the only other thing I can think of, right? But Atari has been vocal in trying to figure out the traces of Kenny Veach. Where is he at? In the desert or started a new life or a new identity elsewhere? Now, Atari, maybe some points I mention are outdated now. Maybe you don't think the same way as you did back then, but I'm just highlighting what I know. You can correct, you can make adjustments down below if you wish to. But Atari in the past was really focused about Kenny. Where is he at? What was his last traces online? What comments did he leave? Were there any more in any of the locations? And there were in some way. Um, what were those comments meaning? What, what was the value of them? Something to do with sp spirituality? Or something to do with money or growth expanding? Comments or not? Links with playlist or videos. Bernardo Alvarez is Bernardo Alvarez secretly Kenny Veach and changed plastic surgery, the facial structure, certain similarities. Is that has Kenny tried changing over, still being present under everyone's nose, but as a different persona, possibly? And if not that, maybe changing elsewhere, further out there. There's some other people claiming that a person that works at the healing store was Kenny Veach but transitioned into a woman. It just seems a bit silly. Going to all of that length and depth just to change like that. I mean, I didn't think it was true that bit, but the idea that Kenny Veach is still alive or was still alive up to a certain point past 2014, quite a possibility. Now, my concepts, my research does contrast to Atari, such as the CCTV and going in on that. And whilst Atari may not fully agree and has done her own debunkings, let's say, she has pointed in other directions as to Kenny being in a different location, possibly, and maybe even coming across him face to face. We'll get into that shortly. Sean Horlecker, yeah, he's been out there hiking and there's been coincidences or maybe correlations to doing that, recording it, uploading it, 
getting popular over thousands and thousands, hundreds and thousands of views, growing as a channel, becoming well known, maybe some material being used in other people's footage, higher end YouTube channels, Sean Horlicker making his presence on US news when it came to TikTok, QAnon, Trump or JFK's son returning back secretly. All kinds of things going on. I know that was more down a political route rather than Kenny Beach, but with Sean putting himself out there online, it can make you more of a target to being attacked, just like how I was as to what Sean Horlacher was. That's why at a point in time when I reached out to Sean, just a few questions, Sean responded, yeah, join the party. I've been there, I've done that. I've already experienced it. He's got to put up with it or he's got to deal with it wasn't helpful, but that's just because Sean has supposedly been through a lot of BS. But then transitioning on to when it started occurring in real life, when it became more personal and closer to home, that's where it did become an issue. And the same with Atari, right? Has Sean Horlacher been as vocal as Atari in terms of research and trying to prove that he's still alive, Kenny, that he's living a new life elsewhere? And it could be crossovers or links with other YouTubers out there or things, footage, photos, trying to compare to see if it's the real person or not, or any comments online which could link and hint to somewhere else, or looking at websites which were created at some point, supposedly maybe by Kenny, maybe by some random people, finding out that it was like like children or something running a website and uh, the, the father of those children was someone who was quite... I don't know, wealthy or in high position. Atari going through all that type of stuff, maybe going through details. I don't know, be it addresses and private stuff like that. I don't think that was shared, but some of her own research, which was done, which she's not able or wasn't able at some point to reveal public because it, it was out of respect for someone's privacy at the time or it, it might cause trouble and backlash because to be honest, at one point Atari did encounter some issues on YouTube with her research, so she, she had to change her filter to like a cartoon filter so she could still show everything, but it wouldn't go against either copyright claims or it would prevent the resistance in some way when people tried reporting or claiming this and that. Sean Horlacher didn't go to that extent. The research that Sean Horlacher did was hiking field research boots on ground and then presenting it online which then transitioned eventually into mainly doing live streams at his home talking about the case but then expanding on all the conspiracies the ideas um david wilcox awakening 4d vibrations um so into aliens maybe time travel you know, all the typical US conspiracies, what you could think of, like when you see all the documentaries out there within the US. So obviously, when you go down those rabbit holes, or you look for the truth there, and you're a truth seeker, maybe that label, that title you put upon yourself will then make you an online presence to be targeted, but maybe not directly through associates of Kenny Veach or family members, but more so government officials, agencies, would you say CIA or is that pushing it too far? Pentagon, maybe pushing it too far. Military, uh, mercenaries, third party contractors. I don't know how it works over there, right? But the more you put yourself out there, the more you talk, the higher the chances something may go wrong, right? So I know, I think it might have been Jay Chuck or Jay Silver Hills that talked about a chain of command that you've got to listen up to your higher ups and as an order to everything. I don't think so. I think everybody involved in this case, each role can be just as important as one another, whether it be a content creator, spreading awareness of the case, linking it all together, making that clarity and that understanding known to the rest of the audience and the general public. That's important. A field researcher, a hiker going out there looking for the truth of Kenny or the mysterious M cave can be important. Documenting what one sees out there, maybe finding evidence along the way or discovering new mysteries linked with Kenny or not, 
that's important. Somebody that does online research, maybe not hiking out there, but the online research carries a lot of weight and value in finding the truth, more so maybe about Kenny, his whereabouts, his behaviour, what was he last doing, what was the last conversation he had, what was on his mind at the time, you know, stuff like that. Was he in contact with anyone towards the end who may have helped him or may know more? Has anything popped up since online in which there might be people out there, things monitoring normal people like us or hikers with their research? Because it can always be like a tower somewhere observing everything that goes on within a case or community like this. So online research is important because they can find through the cracks and gaps of information that could be leaking out from somewhere. So you get the idea, even audience members, people that watch the videos, not to cause disruption or trouble or troll, but the genuine people that do watch and listen on in may contribute in some way. Those people are equally as important because they will have a different perspective, a fresh viewpoint on things within the case as to what it could mean about something, interpreting it better than somebody else could, who may be the creator, right? And also they've done their own research or found their own stuff, passing on timestamps, hearing things, seeing stuff in footage, like how people did in Jeff Clark's footage and how others did in Sean Horlacher's, etc. The list goes on. So each role is important and can bring stuff to the table. So I wouldn't say there's a direct chain of command, but is there a hierarchy as to who is qualified to being targeted based on what they get involved in within the case of Kenny Veach? Yes, right? It seems more so that you get directly attacked for revealing the truth about Kenny Veach, more so than you do if you was covering the M cave mystery. Now you could argue and say, the reason why you may get less resistance when directly looking for the M cave is because maybe the M cave doesn't exist. So to the interest of those insiders, Kenny Veach and associates, because they know that they or Kenny made it all up. If any hikers did try searching for the cave and may have found the equivalent of it or made it a mystery of themselves or found a new mystery, well, it wouldn't harm Kenny because it's got nothing to do with Kenny. And in that direction, hiking out there, who cares? Kenny's not there, supposedly, right? So maybe the more time you spend hiking out there, the less attacks you'll receive directly from the Kenny Veach case, right? You got the Kenny Veach disappearance case, he got the M cave mystery. While they go hand in hand together, they can also be standalone separate situations. One's a missing person case, the other one's a mystery. Yes, you can involve yourself in a mystery and you may get caught up in complications with external stuff like military, government. Not because you've directly found something that Kenny Veach found, but maybe you found something else of interest out there, military related. And if that's the case, if that was the case unrelated to Kenny, some people could assume and think that, ah, maybe what we found here is what Kenny Veach found. So there's a link and then there's a link to why he disappeared. But there may not ultimately be a true link. It could be completely separate. And then when people feel attacked or they feel resistance, they think it's directly from the Kenny Beach case. But, but it doesn't mean to say that is the truth. Does that make sense? But when you're focusing on Kenny Beach directly, the individual in the first place that put the area on the map, the individual in the first place that became known because of what happened to him, the individual that was responsible for, whether it be creating the story, or telling the truth of an M cave out there. Now, Kenny himself didn't go in depth with UFOs, military conspiracies like that. He never did. Maybe he didn't get the chance to. We don't know what was going on in here. We don't know if he is interested in that type of topics or not. All we know, he's a hiker. He likes collecting items, decorating his house to tell a story. That's mainly it. Now, maybe Artari has some background info on Kenny as to his interest, his likes and dislikes, 
but I'm just putting into perspective what I know of, right? But when you focus in on Kenny Veach, because of him being a prominent figure for the right reasons or the wrong reasons, okay, it's more closer to home. So anybody within the case secretly that has played a role in covering up Kenny's disappearance or aiding, abetting, and assisting moving him on, dead or alive, well, it's of their interest as to when it does pop up online about research or the latest news on Kenny, right? In a standalone situation, just as an example, if someone has been murdered, killed, assassinated, and someone or a group are responsible for it, if there is somebody assigned to the case and they constantly talk about it and find new information and new leads, they're getting ever so closer to revealing the truth and exposing the culprits. The culprits won't like that, so they'll do everything they can to deter, scare off, or maybe cause misdirection, right? So what Atari could be experiencing is a form of distraction or misdirection from an individual or multiple who have been involved in the death of Kenny or more so the assistance in making Kenny disappear. And when I say make him disappear, it doesn't have to entirely be in a forceful way. It could be helping him get away such as family members or Sharon Pilgrim, the girlfriend, right? Different parameters, different factors to take into mind, whether it be foul play or not quite foul play. You can say it's foul play either way as a whole in the case because people are being lied to and deceived as to the real outcome of Kenny. But as for Kenny himself, if he was being assisted, helped by friends, family, that'd be seen as a positive thing for him. But what he's leaving behind is not a legacy. It's a mystery of dead ends and deceit, which isn't a good thing. Now, some people have said along the way, well, if Kenny did disappear, but he planned it, staged, and he likes the attention, an attention seeker, well, surely the person would come back publicly and say something, reveal, announce themselves. No, because then it all comes to an end. Why would you want it to end? If it feels good knowing that people are constantly talking about the case completely unaware of what's really going on, it's seen as entertainment for those individuals, for Kenny possibly, and he enjoys the attention. The moment he reveals himself, yeah, there'll be a burst of attention and maybe people caring or being happy, but then the mystery dies. Everything goes back to normal. Kenny gets forgotten about. He wouldn't want that. He'd want to drag it out as much as possible if it was down to being an attention seeker. And as well, if you was to reveal yourself publicly, all it would really lead to is maybe more questions and more interrogations and then it could harm your credibility and damage you for the future because people may, you know, add one thing with another and come to the conclusion that it was all fake and staged and then Kenny may get attacked for it in different ways. So it's better to just go off into the sunset and lay low as everything continues on. Because for the length of time, for as long as people spend researching on the case, more so the desert area, the area Kenny Beach was supposedly last in the presence of because of his scent and items, it's like a wild goose chase. Now, I can do a standalone video, but part of me was thinking that Kenny, okay, going out there, taking items with him, placing them down gently or spread, who knows, in a rush or not, to basically prove he went out there. So it proves and ties in line with what he said to Sharon the night before and the text message the following day in the morning, 6 a.m., basically saying he's heading gone out, right? It just perfectly ties it all together like a timeline. So once he's done that, then Kenny can go off and say, well, my job's done, time to move on and go elsewhere. What do you gain, though, from leaving behind a mystery like that? I mean, I might have mentioned some points here and there. Is there much gain? The money part, kind of unknown of. As for the YouTube side, adverts on his channel, he could be monetized, 
he, he can qualify for that, so maybe monetizing the video so he's gaining something in the background. More so, maybe the gain is starting just a fresh life, but causing disruption, deceit, misdirection, so that nobody can find him, track him down. People online, people he knows of, anyone out there that may have been after him, you really reinforce with evidence that you're making a statement. You're going out there, you are there, the evidence proves it, but then you sneak off in a different direction for, his, for, the, for the rest of time, right? Providing there's no other stuff found elsewhere, people are just going to keep going back to that spot in which Kenny is far away from, right? So for all the people that do engage in this case, who aren't directly looking for Kenny in the right direction, they're going in the wrong direction, supposedly, there'd be no need to be attacked for doing that type of stuff. Now, I focused quite a lot with time, the desert area, the strange findings, the reptilian eye, the weird voices, the paranormal stuff, the items found out there. How does it link? Who put it there? Is there a rogue hiker? Is there someone trying to disrupt it all? trying to hurt people and stuff. Never really came to a definitive conclusion, but strange things have been added with time, some stuff taken away, okay? Have I, have I been directly attacked for covering some of that stuff? Yeah, and it's been online, not in real life. Maybe geographically speaking, maybe that's why I stand out to others, because just about everyone else that has been attacked in some way or another, linked with the research on Kenny, or indirectly through desert exploration, they're all from the US. They're an easy target due to the locations they may be in, close to Vegas or not, simply in the US or a bit further afar, a bit more of a target in a way. Now, maybe there's a few exceptions when it comes to Atari being a, further, a little bit further away, and yet people still determined to possibly infiltrate her. We'll get to that shortly. But for the most part of it, people tend to get attacked if they're within reach of the attacker, okay, whether they're known or not. Now, with the Dylan Rounds case in community, all the people that got caught up in drama and conflict, not because of getting directly close to the truth, that was nothing to do with that. Most of it was to do with pettiness, drama, falling out, nothing to do with the case whatsoever. People who did get stuck in sticky situations and got hurt, got attacked directly or behind one's back, family members, friends, workplaces, whatever it may be, it was all because they were all within the same country. They're all in the US. Easier to find, easier to track, maybe easier to get a hold of, phone calls made, phone numbers being exchanged in the background, emails, etc. More of a target. So basically, to put it in perspective, after everything that I've done and covered with these different cases, if I was living in the US right now, I could be completely screwed, okay? Completely screwed. You never know. But who's going to go to such great lengths and depth to swim across water? Unless there was a, an extremely good reason to do so. And because that's not happened yet, you could genuinely argue and say, well, because I haven't received in-person resistance, geographically speaking, obviously I'm not much of a threat within the case and I'm not close enough to the truth to warrant a reaction and response from certain dark forces out there. But for Atari to be on the receiving end of that type of stuff, infiltration, possible stalking by Kenny Veach himself or a family member, an associate, a friend, whoever, and to cross over to get onto a new island to go to Hawaii, isn't there a great level of effort and money taken into account to get from point A to point B and to cover a fair bit of distance as well for the sake of infiltrating somebody? Clearly, it must mean that there's a definitive reason to do that. To go to such lengths and depths, there must be a reason to do that and Atari being a person of interest, and people on the inside not liking what Atari was doing. 
Now, people in the background may not like what I do, but maybe I don't go to the same depths as Atari does with things personally about Kenny or family members or photos. So I'm not triggering that reaction. So there's no warrant or need for people to come after me directly. Does that make sense? I said different factors in play and take in mind. I said most of the stuff I've experienced, if not all, was online. Still bad, can still be damaging. Um, I take it serious though. Atari takes it serious. Sean Horlecker takes it serious. But if you wanted to do like some kind of hierarchy list, I could be towards the bottom in that. In quantity, I'm attacked the most. In quality, not quite the same, not as severe, okay? If we're talking specifically about YouTube though, in terms of one's channel health, I could be quite high up there on the hierarchy in terms of the severity because with impersonation accounts of me, it can paint a false negative picture of myself. I've seen it in Kenny Veach case, happened in Dylan Rounds. False behaviour, impersonation, paints a bad picture, people misunderstand and assume it's me, so they report me directly, I lose my channel. That can happen, right? Or people that spread misinformation, defamation about me on a case can harm credibility. It could mean people don't listen or trust me anymore in the future. It could mean people try to report me for those allegations and then it leads to a channel being taken down and being completely silenced. So as for the YouTube part, yeah, I can be considered as having more to lose. But in terms of the resistance being on the receiving end of is greater there because they can have the power. And if they give false information, they can have the power to take something away from somebody else. Now, it didn't happen to me, but it could have. And maybe if I responded back the wrong way, yes, it could have gone wrong. So, yeah, that's a problem there. Um, with Sean Horlecker, he's somewhat up there on the list as well. He's been attacked online. Would that be directly through the Kenny Veach family or associates within the case? Maybe not. Maybe more so still focused on the desert part, the military stuff, the cover-ups, the political side. Sean Horlecker was put on a watch list or something out there, YouTube-related, blacklisted, or because of TikTok and because of making news in America. Sean Horlecker made the news, so maybe he'd be on the watch list by agencies out there thinking, is Sean a threat to the US? Could he cause any harm, damage, trouble? Is he revealing too much about certain secrets? Maybe we need to keep a close eye on him. And maybe there was attempts made to try and scare him in real life to break him into submission, but it didn't seem to work, right? So there, there could be a level of intensity of resistance if you get too close to the truth in revealing military government secrets. Was that what Kenny Veach was directly trying to uncover and reveal? No. Kenny just came across a cave that looked a bit weird and felt a bit weird and he wanted to explore it but he wanted to also be prepared. He had no idea if it was military related or not so you could say he was a bit naive and clueless if it was true but the difference with Sean Horlacher is Sean strongly believes that there is a cave out there and that it could well be covered up and he found it. He also strongly believes that you know, he needs to be prepared and he needs to be armed and he needs to have a presence of personnel with him for safety reasons and for practicality reasons. Um, and with Sean being interested in being awakened and knowing the truth of everything within this world or at least within the US and certain secrets and conspiracies going on in the background, being able to reveal it to learn more and enlighten others, well... There's more motivation there to uncover secrets. Kenny Veach wasn't as motivated in that sense as to what Sean Horlacher is. So because Sean Horlacher is more invested over a longer period of time, it will make Sean more of a target. More of a target to outside external negative influences and forms of threatening behaviour and attacks on Sean. Which may be what Kenny experienced if Kenny did go out there and was taken out. But if that was all BS, 
Sean could be looking for the M cave, which doesn't exist. SB could be doing the same thing. Jeff Clark could be doing the same thing. It might not exist, but something else does exist out there unrelated to Kenny. And it's that mysterious and important enough that if anyone does uncover it, aside from the Kenny Beach case, those type of people, those researchers, field researchers, will be attacked for getting too close to the truth. But it doesn't mean to say it's to do with the Kenny Beach case. It can be outside interference in a way. So you can divide it into two. So I do think that the true attacks, the true threats come from when you focus on Kenny and you're trying to reveal the truth as to where did he go? Is he alive or not? Now, let's be fair. CCTV footage, phone call in, what was it, 2022? Stuff like that. Some form of evidence to suggest Kenny's alive. Why did I not receive resistance? Why did I not get attacked for covering that stuff? Is it because people on the inside are confident and know that that's not Kenny, so they've got nothing to worry about? But surely it creates that narrative and intensifies the concept that Kenny is alive, and surely those on the inside who know Kenny's alive and may have assisted, they wouldn't want that coming into play. They don't want it to snowball effect, right? When I say they, I'm referring to people or a person involved in Kenny's disappearance in unnatural ways, foul play. For Kenny, aiding or against Kenny, right? So if I've focused on Kenny Beach as well, I said I've done a full circle. I focused heavily on the desert, the findings, the analysis, the comparisons, the weird stuff going on. I've been attacked for it by trolls or insiders, you never, <coughs> you never know, or people outside of the Kenny Beach case who are assigned. As people said, people assigned within the Kenny Beach case to learn, to be a scout, to cause and plant misinformation and misdirection, to throw people off, to drag things out. Well, that could apply maybe in some way with the hiking stuff adding more mystery to what's already there and some of it not being natural, right? Or information being added online by YouTube channels which come across as if they know it all and then down the line, they don't and it's a lie but it's a form of misdirection and wasting time, right? They could be assigned within. Whether it be assigned by associates or people tied with the Kenny Veach case personally to get, to encourage others who may be still interested in this case, to think that Kenny's in the desert, to use as much information or false stories and false narratives to drive people out in that direction, to keep them away from the real truth, well, yeah, methods like that can be done. But then maybe third-party people could be assigned or get involved, military-related, government-related, some kind of agency, who is aware and alert that there is a presence of humans out there in the desert, close to the military restricted land and on land that the military wants or wanted, who are keeping a close eye as well, right? Whether it be stuff I cover and pick up on, or the people directly going out there. So you can get attacked in different directions for different reasons and there's different motives. So you could say there's two sets of resistance. No, three sets of resistance Number one, the first set of resistance is just troublemakers, random people, trolls online, the normal stuff, what you would expect. Whether it's nasty or subtle, neutral, negative, it just happens because people want the 15 minutes of fame and they're just like messing about, so the worthless, okay? But it happens and it can happen most frequently because it does online in general. Tier number two could be those assigned, those working with Kenny in trying to cover up the truth. Directly with research on Kenny, you'll get attacked for getting too close for it and you may get threatened. They don't want you to get any closer to the truth. The third tier of people may have nothing to do with Kenny Veach, but everything to do with the hiking, the land out there, the Mojave Desert of unknown secrets and hidden equipment and bases. 
and they don't want it being uncovered or publicly documented so they will do their own thing to cause attacks personal or not to try and lure people away or direct them elsewhere three sets of people three sets of attacks you could face through Kenny Veach research or through hiking out there I'm kind of in the middle because I cover it all online, but I do cover both topics, hence why I could be considered the most attacked individual. But in terms of severity levels, nowhere near comparable to some of us like Sean Horlecker or supposedly Atari. Okay, so hopefully that puts things into perspective. Of course, if you have been attacked yourself, a viewer, a researcher, whatever, leave your stories down below, providing they are genuine, okay? And if you genuinely feel like you've been attacked or even if you've got evidence to prove it, right? It can help put things into perspective. So, yes, Atari has done her focus on Kenny Beach, the possibilities of being alive. Not so much CCTV footage orientated, but other means, other ideas, and I can't remember everything, okay? So just take that into mind. But one thing I just wanted to highlight, okay? Atari, if you are here, I'll leave a question. If you don't see this question, if you don't answer, I'll just post it elsewhere. But my question to you, Atari, in regards to that visit in Hawaii by that strange individual... I have covered a video on that in the past, just simply pointing it out. Strange, creepy guy on the side. Looks like a thumbs up or something. He later was, what, supposedly hanging around your area or family's area, as you told the story in the past. My question is to you, based on your later video of comparing the photo of the stranger with Kenny... Is it possible for me to have a look at that myself and try and compare contrast to give you my thoughts, my opinion on the individual, whether it's Kenny or not? It's your material, it's your research, it's your story, your experience. But I need to know, is it possible for me to take on board that material, what you've created, for me to look at myself and reach a possible conclusion? Let me know down below in the comment section. If you don't see this question, if anyone else can pass it on, that would be good. And if that's not possible, I'll just post the question elsewhere, right? So I'll be awaiting a response, see what happens next, okay? Because if Atari is getting supposedly attacked, okay, in real life or online, if there's a way of easing that load, if Atari is carrying all the load of resistance, then if you can spread it out a little bit, it might mean Atari won't get attacked as much, right? You spread it out just a little bit. Not saying that it's a guarantee, but it's just a suggestion, okay? So we're Sean Horlacher, right? I said, we need to get into specifics, don't we, now? With everything outlined and labelled, what specifically has led to people feeling attacked, truly attacked? Well, Atari Online has received comments over time. Negative, maybe insulting, and some personal, reaching out to her directly. Questioning, asking questions, or giving a backstory as to who they are, where they come from, what they know, or the fact they're interested in the case but directly reaching out to Atari and Atari feeling that, you know, with the backstory of these people, it seems as if they've been assigned like a scout, scouting for information or assisting in making her go down the wrong lead to try and lead her away from where she was initially going, right? So a personal attack there, maybe appearing friendly and nice towards Atari as a form of, of building a report, building that trust, and then stabbing her in the back afterwards. It can happen. It's happened within the Dylan Rounds case community. Not done quite the same way, but people have been responsible for spreading false information and deceiving others, which then does lead to disruption and misdirection. So Atari feels 
at may have happened here. And with people personally reaching out to her in the background, messaging, texting with time, present or past and maybe future, it's like, hmm, why, why are they reaching out? Okay. I mean, people have reached out to me. Has it been dodgy most of the time? No, it, it's been viewers who've seen something in footage and wanted my thoughts on it. When it's come to people with a lot to say as for information, it's mainly been through the comment section, okay, on YouTube where it's all public. There was only once or twice someone directly sent an email to me, supposedly from GLP or someone from GLP speaking on behalf of an individual called Dip Rock, who then emailed me with a massive paragraph telling me this and that about there's nothing to see here and advising me to move on to other stuff. They're not in the position to be telling me what to do. But it seems like they could have been some kind of scout or some kind of force presence trying to deter me away from covering the case of Kenny Beach, similar to what Atari experienced online. Someone personally reaching out privately and telling you what you should do or how you should think. They're not talking with you, they're talking at you. They may come across as nice or they may come across as very arrogant. It comes in different shapes and sizes, right? For most part of it, I've seen those people and with time, immediately or later, they do show an attitude problem. If you don't think like them or agree, they have a tantrum, they throw the toys out of the pram, okay? They could throw the toys out of the pram because they feel like they failed. Failed in trying to cause disruption and deceiving. If Atari is trusting or thinks the best in people, she could be considered more vulnerable. Now that, what I want to make very clear before, there's no misunderstandings. I'm not insulting Atari. I'm just making a possible observation. If Atari is either spiritually charged or emotionally driven for different reasons, may think the best in people. Certain factors like that, okay, could be considered vulnerable. Easy to manipulate if that's what the attackers think. Not me, but what attackers could think. The attackers' dark forces that may identify Atari as being a mother, having a family, bargaining chips, okay? What you'll see with time, where it be emotional manipulation, emotional blackmail, blackmail itself, hostage situations and negotiations. That sometimes people, if you're a target, people may not come directly after you, but they may go directly after someone you know or love, a family member, a friend, a child, no matter the age. People can go underhand and go around, find a back door in to a situation where you're vulnerable or prone to submitting or backing off because you don't want whatever that's happened to impact anybody else. So really, with Atari having responsibilities and loved ones around her, it will make her more of a target, but also more of a target to being attacked in different ways, possibly, right? In real life or online. If you are a lone wolf, you have no contacts, you have no friends, you have nothing around you, then they can only go directly through you and nobody else because you don't associate yourself with anybody. So in a way, you're not as vulnerable. There's not as many ways to break you down compared to Atari's situation, right? So that might be why people go after Atari compared to others like me, right? If people try it with me, likely it will go wrong, right? With the Dylan Rounds case, right? The way people were acting there, it was non-negotiable when it came to this community. If people tried causing problems or trying to do what they did elsewhere, plant, plant a bomb to make it implode on the community and cause deceit and trust issues between one another, it happened elsewhere. It didn't happen here because I wasn't stupid enough to fall for it. But at the same time, I was very stubborn, okay? I was very locked on. I was very focused. I picked up on the patterns before it truly happened. So they had nothing. They could do nothing, right? Kenny Veach case could be similar in different ways. So if they know they're not going to get through to somebody and have it 
their way, then they'll try it with somebody else. And it just so happens that Atari has been very focused on Kenny and has done a lot of research, so it makes her a target. And because there's different backdoor entry routes, whether it be online or in real life, if there's a presence of dark force that can exploit that, Atari is more likely to give in. So in the past where if people were leaving comments online and, it, and Atari felt that there was an, a link that could be established between multiple fake accounts, okay, of people impersonating or all linked to a, an individual that just happens to be linked with Kenny or the family or an associate, that Atari, when seeing those early signs and potential warnings, it's like, you know what, I'm going to back away from this. It, it's not worth my time. It's too dangerous. And as for the the point of going from Las Vegas to Hawaii with family, that can be for many reasons. I don't know them all, but you could say in a way it was kind of good timing considering how intense it was getting within the case, okay? With Atari living in Las Vegas at the time, that's probably the worst place you can be living when you're directly involved in a possible dark shady case which originates from Las Vegas right? And certain family members may live in Las Vegas, right? Some and friends of Kenny. So you're really in the epicenter of it all, okay? And, you know, it's just like that real thing. If somebody is so determined to find your location, they will always find a way. Obviously, the closer you are to everything and the relevancy of it, the more of a target you become. So, yes, while Satari was receiving either threats or creepy messages online and a pattern could have been established as to who's responsible or the motive of it all, you might start feeling a bit concerned or worried and thinking, hmm, maybe I should back off for now or maybe I should disable comments for now or privatise certain videos to let things blow over, to lay low. That's a normal thing to do, especially when you're in a compromised position, geographically placed. Then in time with moving from Las Vegas to Hawaii for numerous reasons, okay, and with family and maybe reunited with further family, okay, with origins and stuff, you may feel safe. Well, you should feel safe, maybe at home, back at home or feeling the peace once again. And just the distance, you kind of detached yourself from a form of darkness, whether it be a dark past or the involvement with Kenny Beach. Getting away from that, shifting to a different focus, as for content on your channel as well. And that's what Atari did for some time, spent time not as actively engaged within the Kenny Beach case for numerous reasons, whether it be falling outs or not, but more so just trying to stay away from the creepy people online and those reaching out because I can't remember the year or the time when Atari moved to Hawaii, but it would have tied in line with roundabout receiving resistance, okay? So if I've been able to detach from all of that geographically and as for one's YouTube channel's content, right, you're moving away from it all, starting again fresh in a way. Is that like what Kenny did? Not quite in that sense, but, you know, moving away, forming distance. But obviously, going to Hawaii, and the people you're surrounded by, more comfort, maybe, and uh, more people you um, know of and stuff, changing your content about. I don't know, depending how driven people are, if they identify that you are where you are now and who you're surrounded by, does it make you more vulnerable? Because there's more people around who you care about who could be targeted as well. With the Dylan Rounds case, unrelated, but... You had people involved in drama in which their friends or family members were dragged into or attacked in the background without the person's knowledge. So collateral damage took place. Collateral damage could occur here as well, right? And that's what ties in next with whilst Atari detached away from the case and geographically speaking moving to Hawaii, certain comments died down, troll accounts or default profiles died down. And we've simply stopping coverage on the Kenny Beach case for a certain point in time. It's like, okay, good. She's taken the bait. She's listened to us. Us being the dark forces out there.
So there's no need to infiltrate her anymore or cause any more resistance. Well, supposedly. Now, I don't know if Atari did any slight references or points or coverage about Kenny whilst in Hawaii or not, because I don't follow everything, but nevertheless, she did have a very strange and possibly scary experience in real life firsthand when driving down a road, or she was in the passenger seat whilst the husband driving, going down somewhere, not far away from their house or family's house, and there was a creepy guy on the side of the road, looked like in a bit like a hitchhiker, a bit of a sunken cheeks, cheekbones and sunken eyes, long hair, looking a bit scruffy, looking a bit creepy, almost like a skeleton face, okay? And ever since Atari's done a little comparisons and it could look like Kenny Veach, depending how you look at it, that's why it'd be interesting for me to take a look in the future. But nevertheless, just that sighting alone with everything that's happening in the background, whether you're paranoid or not, feeling that there is a dark force around you at that time, feeling that you know, you've, I don't know, you've detached, you've severed ties with the Kenny Veach case long term. You've moved away from Las Vegas. Shouldn't you be safe now? Why should people be still coming after you when you've stopped making videos? Is it because the videos are still public, maybe? I know Atari, at a later point, privatised her videos. I thought they were taken down or deleted, but they were privatised. Maybe that's one of the reasons as to why it was privatised, because she felt that whoever she came across firsthand on the side of the road in Hawaii was an ill infiltrator, someone within the case that has been following, tracking her, and wanted to intimidate her, like a form of gang-type stalking, a form of psychological warfare to break her down, to get a message across to say, hey, don't cover this case anymore, don't be talking about Kenny, no more research, privatise those previous videos and take those photos down, whatever they may be. And to an extent, I guess that's maybe what Atari did, whether it be that's the main motive or not, that's just a suggestion by me and roughly from my memory recollection, okay? But how come, you know, you pass by someone who looks a bit creepy, how do you suddenly associate that person with the case and your previous coverage on it? Well, maybe your senses how you feel is a bit heightened, intense from what you've experienced before. You're a bit shaky. You're a bit cautious, more wary than before. So the slightest of change, the slightest of the environment, the ambience dropping to a, a low tone, a dark feeling, you're probably going to be more in touch with that. Could you be oversensitive and pick up on stuff which isn't there or isn't seen as a threat. That's always a possibility. But there's a bit more backstory behind this supposed creepy individual on the side of the road. Um, same day or later, seen to be in the back garden of Atari's family's home or family-related home in the backyard, either hiding under a truck or inside of a truck, abandoned or not, hanging about, squatting, Eventually moving away from the area, but being so close to home, seeing a person on the side of a highway or a road can be a bit creepy, depending how they look and how you feel about it. Then knowing either before or after that they were near to where you were living in your garden, yeah, that seems like you're being followed, you're being watched, you're being stalked. And then you start thinking, why am I getting stalked? Why am I being followed? Who, who would do that and why? Maybe it's because of what you've been involved with in the past and your past has catched up with you and hasn't gone away. And it will only go away once you've cleansed yourself or ridden all the research and deleted it all. And maybe that was the final straw. The dark force out there, so motivated and determined to go all the way from the US to Hawaii, cross on over, I guess a plane ride and money spent to get there, to maybe cause intimidation, right? You think you've escaped from darkness, that darkness follows you. Not good, is it? You feel trapped. What can you do? You do whatever it takes, even if it means going against the case by hiding your own videos and research to protect yourself and more importantly, to protect the people around you.
Now, if Atari was a lone wolf and had no one around her, then no one else would be impacted by her involvement in the case. So she might have been more determined to keep on going in that sense. But, you know, that wasn't the case. Now, I'm not putting words into Atari's mouth. I'm just simply giving my opinion and at least what I can remember of the situations. But these are all based on true stories of what she's experienced. It has been documented on her channel. And part of the creepy guy caught on camera, I documented it and analysed it on my channel. If you'd like to check that out, we can always revisit it in the future if Atari is okay with that. Okay? Has Atari been attacked ever since? Not that I'm aware of, but there's always that chance at any point, any time. Now, I do have a question. Before we move on to Sean Horlecker and his attacks, I've got a question, a second one, in response to Atari, and hopefully she can respond down below in the comments section. So, during my time of when I was attacked by, let's say, a troll account, but a dedicated one, they were known as Spain Wins Numero Uno. That's what their channel name was. Few people familiar with. DJ Moore, I think it's DJ Moore, or DJ Reacts, probably DJ Moore, involved in the Kenny Beach case and hyped out there, as some of you will know. DJ Moore tracked and followed this Spain Wins Numero Uno on YouTube because there came a later point where the channel changed its name to something else. And because of the comments or the previous comments changing in username and profile picture, DJ Moore looked back at those past comments by Spain Wins Numero Uno and clearly saw for himself that it was of a different name now. So it was the same account, just a different name, but the same person behind it, okay? So I think that they went from Spain wins numero uno, changing their username to Bird Guts. I think as for the profile picture, it was of that album cover of Fat Boy Slim right here, right now. That enlarged, cartoonish face of a obese male wearing black glasses. I believe it was of that. Okay, and then maybe the profile picture changed again at a later point. Bird Guts also known as Spain Wins Numero Uno, constantly complaining on my channel, also copyright material, using my material without consent at times, photos and videos, as well as spreading false information, misinformation, defamation of character, damaging and against YouTube TOS. It was unnecessary and there was no motive given by the person. And they may still stick around till this day under different usernames, you never know. The last time I saw them, they were known as Privilege. And it was a, a profile cartoon photo of a female. Privilege covering stuff on Idaho 4, the Brian Koberger case. Getting triggered when I started covering it myself. They had a form of jealousy there. It all appears to be tied to the same account. So Atari, considering you can relate to being on the receiving end of that type of stuff, and I believe, I'm, if I'm correct in saying, you, Atari, was on the, re the receiving end of Bird Guts, Spain Wins, Numero Uno in the past being attacked online. Whether it be serious or not, my ultimate question to you is, did you ever patch things up? Did they patch things up with you, Atari? Because during that long spell of absence from the case and absence from my channel, I noticed, Atari, you were getting on quite well with Bird Guts, also known as Spain Wins Numero Uno. You were chatting along. It looked like you were friends. It looked like things were made up between you. And considering they attacked you in the past, and they attacked me, and still did up to a certain point whilst they were around, what changed? Um... Did they apologise to you? Did you reach out to them? Why that friendly connection? That seems like a shift, a change in behaviour, a change in power dynamics. you got a troll out there causing harm, causing disruption, going against YouTube TOS, 
may have hurt you in the past, tried to attack me, and then your best buddies at one point. What was that all about? Are you aware, Atari, that Bird Guts was once known as Spain Wins Numero Uno? It's the same person, the same troublemaker. I just want to know why you are all friendly with that person who was responsible for causing trouble in the Kenny Veach case and attacking me in the process. Are you aware of that? Feel free to respond back down below as soon as possible. I'm very interested because I do remember seeing that. And where did the conversations take place? On your channel in the community tab section. I saw it with my own eyes. I'm just interested. Feel free to respond back when you can regarding that. So, with that all being said and done, Atari has been attacked in many different ways for her research on Kenny Beach. Seems likely the motives by the attackers quite driven, driven in silencing her, but also covering up the research done, wanting it removed, right? Kind of intensified. Sean Horlacher. Sean Horlacher getting sick, ill from exploring. Was that a form of ra radiation poisoning? Was it a form of military equipment making him feel uneasy and ill afterwards to deter him away from a location, kind of like Jeff Clark with the zaps and the vibrations? Maybe, but maybe there's not enough proof or evidence of that in Sean Horlacher's case because many were saying that maybe Sean just got ill because of dehydration or because of the weather, the heat, changes in temperature, how he was at the time, his immune system, whatever it may be, okay? And it's just a coincidence. Being near a cave or a supposed cave, which is supposedly covered up, which Kenny Beach did so happen to point out and say, oh yeah, the M cave, kind of like a place, just like right here. Very coincidental, right? And the timing of it all, getting ill after being up close with it, with your ears, your mouth, your nose, it's understandable as to why people can link one thing with another, but is there enough proof? Not really. Because many of the hikers, not many, but a range of other hikers have been through the area. SB has been kind of hands-on with the area. Jeff Clark too. I mean, up close. Did they get sick, ill afterwards? No. So maybe we can rule that out. Sean Horlacher wasn't directly attacked in that situation, though he was supposedly stalked in the dark, which, to be fair, SB Vegas Adventures experienced himself, Scott Natal as well, all linked to the same creature or reptilian or just an animal. Who knows? One, one could be individual and unique to the others, or it could all be similar. Up for debate. No proof of it happening at the time because a lot of the people that experienced it didn't capture it on camera at the time. We're just hearing it from their stories, recalling the events of what they experienced at the time. So we can only listen in and trust what they say. Okay. Um, so whatever's out there, maybe tied with what Kenny came across or experienced, who knows? Or, as said, away from the case, a standalone mystery you get too close to the truth, you get watched, you get followed, you get stalked. A form of intimidation, pushing you away from the place. It's always a possibility, right? But considering the amount of times other hikers have been out there since, they've not always heard footsteps. It's just been every now and then, maybe a one-off. So there's no consistency there, is there? Okay? You, you would have thought if you were getting too close to the truth... And you kept returning back to getting closer, the intensity levels would crank up in terms of how you're treated. So it's valid for Atari. Atari doing her research online. First of all, some dodgy messages. Crank it up to some personal messages and then crank it up to an in real life encounter with a creepy individual that could share similarities, possible links to the case. That's going up one bit to the max. So you'd think if hikers went out there, they heard noises or they heard whispers, they felt footsteps, you'd think, God, if you go back out there again, you know, after that warning the first time round, then surely you're going to get killed, you're going to get kidnapped, something worse is going to happen, something more scary is going to happen. But it didn't. There's not enough 
correlation. There's not enough patterns of consistency there, right? Normally, you associate resistance with getting too close to the truth. The closer you get, the more the resistance steps up, the more it intensifies, the worse it gets for you as a person to the inevitable that you are taken away or your life is. Okay? Now, with the hikers having their own creepy experiences out there, that's about it. Okay? Doesn't have to be directly related to Kenny. Okay? But... Aside from that, Sean did experience online his live streams being shut down unexpectedly without his consent. People subscribed to his channel, notifications turned on. All of a sudden, unsubscribed. Notifications not working. I mean, I've had that myself. It's happened to other people. So maybe it's just a YouTube thing. Let's try and debunk it on the spot. But you can understand the coincidence. You're getting close to the truth of Kenny. You're very vocal about the case and other things going on and politically speaking and other conspiracies. It's a hot spot. Could be a breeding ground, but also a key focus point for incoming attacks on behalf of Kenny or military government, YouTube, who knows. So live streams cut short, notifications turned off, unsubscribed, not receiving the true views, videos blacklisted, um numbers going down, statistics being altered with out of Sean's control. Not fair, right? But it happened. It happened to me as well, okay? And it's not all about Kenny. During the Dylan Rounds case, dodgy things happened. YouTube screwed me over so much. During my time in the Kenny v, uh, the Dylan Rounds case, there's witnesses present right now that will understand how screwed over I was. How screwed over I was because of YouTube. So... I don't think it's like um, a direct link to Kenny Veach. I just think it's YouTube being idiots. <coughs> being idiots, okay? But you can understand the coincidences. Now, Sean Hall, like I said, he had an implant in his uh, shin, like some microchip from maybe being out there in the desert. And he only noticed it a few days or a week later since getting back from his original 2019 hike. And he saw it there. It looked like a little scab or something, but it looked like it was implanted and it wasn't going away. And ever since onwards, things started happening, whether it be Sean Hall, like a dreaming of things, weird experiences there. And then fast forward much later onwards, not covering the Kenny Beach case as much, if not going completely dead silent on that, but maybe vocal elsewhere. And in the meantime, with Sean relocating from Las Vegas to... I think Elko, Nevada, correct me if I'm wrong, where Sean Hollicker was now living at. Previously, he had unwanted guests turning up at his place. He had his yoga mats completely clawed, like shredded into pieces like an, a monster or an animal did it. Now, how close was it to the house? Close enough, just on the outside of the porch. Could it have got in? Maybe, but it didn't. So, there's something lurking and stalking Sean Horlecker, a creature, the same thing which he heard footsteps out in the desert or something unrelated. Could it just simply be a person, a group assigned to silence Sean, to intimidate him, to do like what others did with um, Atari, scaring him off, getting him to delete the videos maybe. Sean Horlecker at points and uh, it still applies now, Sean did delete either his videos or privatise most of them, including some of his Kenny Veach live streams, if not all of them, from the past. And then he started re-uploading some or reposting or setting them public at a later point. So you can see for a certain length of time, what Sean did is what Atari did. And that's as a response from... No, it's a reaction from a response they received, which was unpleasant and not so nice. In real life gang stalking, in real life planned infiltration of an individual within a case, that seems to be possible. There was a time where Sean said, a guy came down, a biker with a bandana on, his bike broke down, needed some help with it. Sean went outside, was a little bit wary, cautious of it, and decided to leave him be because the direction was supposed to be going in where the guy said his bike broke down was 
kind of like a dead end of the community where all the houses were, the neighbourhood, and it was going off a beaten pathway, which would have eventually led to a mine shaft. So Sean was thinking that this was an assassination attempt, where if Sean went in the direction the biker was going, if he started helping or something with the bike, the biker could have knocked him out, killed him on the spot and dumped him in the mine shaft. Was it an attempted assassination? Maybe. That's what Sean Horlacher felt like at the time. And prior to that, before that, when Sean was involved in the Kenny Beach case and on the way back from a hike, when Sean pulled over, I guess maybe on the highway, he noticed underneath, uh, I, don't think, I don't know if it was a suspension or some bar to do with the wheel, something underneath which is very important on a vehicle was undone, tampered with, in which if it did completely go, it would have caused his vehicle to flip over on the highway, causing a car crash and also injuring him in the process, maybe fatal. So was that another attempted assassination? Was it whilst Sean Hallecker was parked down Joe May Road, possibly, when hiking out there, someone was nearby in the area, went to his vehicle, which was unattended for, looked underneath, untightened some bolts or screws, caused damage, and left, hoping that when Sean returns back to that vehicle, it would malfunction and he would be killed on the spot, maybe, and it could be seen as accidental, foul play, right? All these different outcomes. You could say, oh, maybe the vehicle underneath things just being loose, with time wear and tear right so you know you can debunk it with common sense but then when you look at the coincidences it could it could reveal more to the story which has that depth okay so granted there's different ways of looking at it there's no harm in looking at it as a whole holistically whilst demonstrating balance so yeah the people that have been attacked the most and some severe degree have been um, a key presence within the case and have done their research, whether it be field research like Sean or online research like Atari on Kenny. And obviously Sean's done some research on mysteries or conspiracies in general, so that might make him a target as well. Okay, so maybe the people you would expect to be attacked were in fact attacked in bad ways. Well, let's, let's not play it down. I've been attacked as well. So there's been methods done there. And I said, there might be factors such as geographical location, which really plays a major role as to can someone be bothered to do this and to do that, considering the location. Okay. You know, at the end of the day, the dark reality is people will always have their ways and find their ways to get through, to reach out. But, you know, does it correlate to the truth? How close you are to that? You know, if I've been very close to the truth already, how much resistance did I receive? Was it that intense compared to the likes of Atari or Sean Horlecker? No, it wasn't. So that's why it creates that bit of confusion and crossover of, okay then, sure, Atari has done research on Kenny Veach and has suggestions that he's still alive and maybe people assisted in his disappearance and staging it. Okay, well, I've talked about that. And I've even presented evidence which, whether people agree with or not, or have debunked, I've put it out there publicly and talked about and really hammered it home. Those videos did blow up. It did receive attention. So surely you would think, if I do stuff similar to what Atari does, if Atari gets attacked for it, then shouldn't I be attacked as well to the same extent? Especially because my videos, no offence to her, exploded. So the more known it becomes, the more that message spreads about, the more it's seen as a threat from the dark forces within who are trying to keep it silent, hush, hush. And if I'm the one there spreading all the news and doing a successful job at that, then I'd be seen as a problem. So if Atari is going to be dealt with, then I should be as well. I should be silenced too. I should be attacked. I should be killed, right? But it hasn't happened. Just like when it comes to Jay Chuck as to Sean Horlacher or SB as to Sean Horlacher, okay? Sean's been out there from 2015 to 2016 to 2019. Fair few times. Not since then. Jay Chuck's been out there since, I guess, 2021, 22, 23, 24, and many times throughout those years. 
SB 2022 onwards and has been out many times in between, right? If Sean Horlacher has received resistance for his coverage on the case and his hikes out there getting close to the truth in the nature of Kenny or unknown military secrets, then why hasn't J. Chuck or SB gotten in trouble as well? If they're doing the same thing, if they're following the same direction and finding weird things of their own and documenting it, more so SB because he documents it um, more full in depth, no offence, okay? Wouldn't that make SB a target? Wouldn't that make J. Chuck a target? Wouldn't it make J. Silverheels a target? Anyone that does the same as somebody else, if that somebody else initially is attacked for it, then everybody else that does the same thing should be attacked as well. Just like I was saying, Atari has done her research on Kenny and has strong points and suggestions and ideas, outcomes, theories, conclusions, etc. And mine, some of which are similar. She gets attacked, I don't. What's that all about? And yes, the factor of locations. She's closer to the trouble more than I am. But then you look at SB Vegas Adventures or Jeff Clark or J. Chuck, they've spent time, their presence has been in Vegas, full-time or not. So they're closer to the location. They're within the US, but they've not been attacked to the same extent as Sean Horlacher has. So at the end of the day, is it selective as to who is targeted? The, the most vulnerable people are targeted. The ones that have a family are targeted, because Sean Horlacher had a family at the time and children. So if he's going to get attacked, it could harm his loved ones. Atari's got a family. If she gets attacked, it could harm her loved ones. So there's more of a bargaining chip at hand there to get the message across. Do this, change that, hide this, take this down, or other people get it. Your choice. So it could be vulnerabilities and responsibilities. In those positions, you're more likely to be targeted. Or is it all down to just very creepy coincidences? Some people get attacked for doing something. Other people don't, but they do the same thing. Do you get what I'm saying? Okay? Because it all comes directly down to the truth, the real truth. As said, some of the stuff I've looked at is stuff what Atari's looked at, but I didn't get attacked. But I should have done based on that mentality. Okay? So I think there's a lot of inconsistencies. It's a bit of a problem. It makes it harder to come to a conclusion, but I just wanted to lay it out clearly right now from the past to right now, and what could happen in the future, okay? Granted, Sean Horlacher, if there was attempted assassinations on him, he could be seen as the, the one in most danger, but doesn't have to be directly about Kenny. It could be more about deeper depths within the US, the higher-ups, the hierarchy, the secrets within the US and the state, the desert, unrelated to Kenny. You never know. So yes, there is resistance out there, but is there a clear cut correlation to it all? Not quite, but there are coincidences to suggest that there is a pattern, but is it concrete enough? <laughs> no. Unfortunate, the true outcome is to establish concrete evidence would be to keep covering it, to get threatened and push and push and push up to the point where basically your life's in danger and you're on the verge of death or kidnap. <laughs> That's only when you'd truly understand if there is a link or not. And is anyone going to put themselves in that position? Probably not, with common sense, okay? But whether people knew about this or not, I just wanted to let people know in general as to who's been attacked, who hasn't, and just in general, how were they attacked? And was there a motive behind it? The title of this video could be quite hard to summarise, okay? But I'll, I'll try and think of something in relevancy. And um, as for everybody watching, hopefully you found this video interesting, informative. As said, some people see this as just a discussion. Who cares? It does matter. We need to try and understand who's been attacked. Why are they being attacked? And will they be attacked again? Will anyone else get attacked? And is there a pattern to the truth or not? Is there a direction one has to go in in order to get attacked? Right? The more you learn, the more you can prepare for the future and maybe avoid certain situations because some people have already been burnt more than enough. So if it's adaptation, it's worth taking it on board. If you have joined late, I do strongly advise you to rewind back to the start of this video to fully understand everything that's been talked about. 
Once again, this video was done without a script, no writing, no script, nothing in front of me. This is all from in here and expressed through this hole only, okay? Nowhere else. <laughs> so thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. But for now, goodbye and good night.